Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, got Chris with me. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the end of the world. Alright. <laughs> Chris like, he ain't yeah. for anything, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I was hoping you'd say the end of the world or something like that, because we're really only talking about the end of the world as we know it. Right. Right, the whole planet doesn't go up into a ball of flames until um about a thousand years yeah somewhere around the seventh trumpet blast or something like that but we are approaching this date january the 13th of the year 2022 mm -hmm. we have been doing a few classes on it trying to bring out that date when you look at uh the ezekiel and follow um the book of daniel and compare it to other day it kind of shows um, something to happen on that date. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of classes um, on that date, but the thing about it, people tend to focus more on the events that are to occur on that date instead of that date itself. Right. I really want to bring people's attention to the date because I don't know what's going to happen. Right. I'm afraid that there are those out there who may be adding to what I'm saying and might be saying something like, uh, Coach said that the world's going to end, or Coach said we're all going to be um, raptured. raptured away, or Coach said this, or Coach said that, um, and I just wanted to clear that up. Okay. Well, the first thing I do by way of clearing it up is I want to show the definition of the word rapture, because I did mention that in one of the previous videos, but what people have to understand is that there are three definitions to the word rapture. All right. The word, the word when used is capitalized, when you see somebody capitalized the word rapture in the middle of a sentence, they're talking about this third definition. Right. But I rarely ever capitalize the word because I'm talking about these other two definitions of the word rapture. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, these events happen to people all the time. You know, um, what does it say? Read the first one. An expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. See, this was one of the original definitions in the book, right? So this is just joy and excitement. Right. So any feast day, you know, we are almost expected to go through this kind of a rapture, especially tabernacles. I think it's a requirement, right? Right. Right. When it tells us we're supposed to uh, make it a joyous occasion. But then read uh, number two. A state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. Okay. Now, this too happens often. Matter of fact, it happened to me the other day. Um, when, you know, I was spending some time with the Lord and I kind of felt this, uh, feeling, you know what I mean? That you, yeah. you know, just kind of a, a spiritual, peaceful kind of thing. That's kind of what it's describing there. Mm -hmm. So that kind of happens all the time, right? Right. But then the, look at this part B right here. A mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. Now, I think this right here actually fits what's going to happen to us the, uh, in the early stages. Right. Right. One of the first things that's going to happen is this thing here. This, I believe, is what you're reading when you read it over in uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 12. Um, and even in First Thessalonians and uh, First Corinthians, you know, verses, those verses that people talk about the rapture. This is, I believe, what they're actually talking about here. Right. Not necessarily the removal of people from the planet, because that's a different event. Right. And but this um, this what they call the Great Awakening. It actually comes first through the spirit. The, yeah, the spiritual conversion in the twinkling of an eye comes first. So I, I really need to clear up that confusion. You know, I don't want nobody waking up on you know uh, January the fourteenth mad at me because they still here. Mm -hmm. You know, I never said you were going anywhere. You know, in fact, I kind of want to see you stay behind with me. You know, yeah. but anyway, you know, we all have choices in this in this thing. We all have our own honor. So those that plan on going away into the spirit world, um, I'll honor their decision for, that they make on their life, spirit, you know, whether they honor the decisions I make on my life or not. But anyway, <clears throat> let's go on here and let's see what I actually believe is going to happen Okay. on January the 13th or thereabouts. Now, to do so, I'm actually going to use what I think is one of the most prophetic videos on the internet. And that is the video called I Pet Goat. I Pet Goat. Yeah. In this video here, um, I'm going to use it. I can't say, I can't really point to the accuracy of it. But for the sake of a visual aid, 
I'm just going to use it to kind of show what I believe is going to happen. All right. I believe it actually tells us here. But even if it, even if this video itself is inaccurate, like I said, I'm just going to use it as a visual aid. To, I guess, show us what could happen? Show us what I think. What? Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, and I personally, just because I'm thinking, it's probably going to be wrong. <laughs> but I just I just want people to understand what I think so that they don't, you know, wake up. Getting mad at you because... Yeah. I, yeah. Because you thought something I said something different. You thought I meant something different. Get mad because the third temple didn't fall out of the sky. Or something like that to that effect. Yeah, you know, whatever it is. And so I want to be able to point to this video that was made well before January the 13th. Mm -hmm. And um, say, no, I never said that, nor did I even think it. Matter of fact, there is the video to show what I said and what I think. What I thought, at least. And, you know... I'm glad you got to see that video way back then because now you have that registry in your mind. Right. Okay. Well, that's enough stalling as we get through the credits of this video. Um, like I said, this is coming from iPad Goat over there. You get uh, iPad Goat 2. Um, there is an iPad Goat 3. We may touch on it. But what we're going to do now is we're going to use this video in order to show what I believe could happen and, you know, when. And the deal is we're actually going to do it backwards. Oh. Yeah, so what I, I ask you to help us step through it, Chris, backwards. All right, if you will, go ahead and take control of that button right there and just step us back through it. This is a hella fat video. Um, let's start right there. Okay, this right here, I believe, is the capital R rapture. Listed in iPad Go as one of the last things right. mentioned is, or the last thing mentioned in the iPad Go is the rapture. And the reason why I say that is while you're looking at this, what you're seeing is this, this figure here, we're going to talk about him later, watching this is coming out of the sky. And there's some timing elements in here, like that's uh, the um, Scorpio or whatever. So there are some timing elements here. But what you see here is that he's watching this stuff coming out of the sky. And of course, we're looking at it backwards. But he's seeing um, these little fireballs that are coming out of the sky. Right. This is a six seal event. Right. Mm -hmm. This is the this is. Um, um, what's described over there when it's talking about um, the stars falling from heaven wreaking havoc on the earth. We read about that all in the sixth seal. Right, and that's just before the rapture? Well, that event there causes a global earthquake. Oh. Okay, and it is that global earthquake combined with this rock that comes out of, of, of the sky. It's described in, in the scripture as being a rock that's going to hit a Mount of Olives mm -hmm. and split it in half. Um, this, is what, this is what this is showing here. Something coming from space. In fact, when you back up just a little bit, you see him riding in, looking at this stuff coming from behind the sun. And that's what they believe this planet in the ruble. But here, watch right there. Pause right there. Uh, even back up just a little bit. We'll see where this particular one hits these pyramids behind right. here. That's the fall of the government system. So that's why I believe it's connected to this global earthquake because this global earthquake is supposed to knock down every building on the planet. Right. Um, Daniel describes this rock as destroying the beast systems of the world. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're seeing here. It's as destroying Egypt, the modern Egypt. Yeah, the modern day Egyptian system. We are the modern day Egyptian system because we are surviving off of their... Um, way of doing things. Remember, that was the first time in history that humans had to pay to eat. Right. Well, even to this day, we are the only species that has to pay to eat. Those are Egyptian principles, and that's not really our father's way of doing things. Right. Because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they never had a job between the three of them. No. Nope. And neither did their 12 sons. But humanity has been kind of riding this system all the time. This B system as described in Daniel, well, what you see in here in iPad Goat is just showing you the destruction of this system. Mm -hmm. But we know from the scripture that this destruction is also tied to this earthquake. 
and I believe it is this earthquake that's going to that's going to be a, about the time when all of these millions, maybe even billions of people are going to go into the spirit world. Yeah. I'm just scared on me. You just, you know. So the the point of this this particular screen is is how doing this destruction we're seeing the fall of the economies and the um systems that we become used to yeah because even the, the the those economic systems falling apart is going to um cause a lot of deaths right. simply by starvation and you know people not knowing how to feed themselves and exposure and different stuff like that okay so we're backing up now before this event happens that comes out of the sky right okay. we don't we're not really putting a date on this yet it's I, you know, I could guess somewhere around 2024 based on other classes that we've done. Right. Um, that event could be a little bit, it's a little bit further down the road. And we'll just say for grins and giggles, we'll just put a date stamp on that event about 2024. Okay. So there are things that has to happen before then. Right. So what we're doing now is we're, we're backing up until where we're at now. Until we show, get to the present. Right, to show you what I believe is all to transpire. So there's the answer as far as those who said, you know, Coach said that the, the, the we was about to get raptured. No, Coach said, you know, this global catastrophe that promises this, I'm going to call it is, this extinction level event yeah. that we call the rapture, that they call the rapture, is not really expecting to for another few years. Right. So let's talk about some of the other stuff that has to transpire. Like, for instance, on this screen right here, you're seeing the fall of the church. It's actually already fell. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're seeing back here in the um, background here. In this area, that is actually the church ha having already been destroyed. Crumbling. Crumbling. Okay, so let's back up and let's see why it crumbled. And there's this other figure coming on the scene that we talked about earlier. Okay. Now, you can stop right there. This this guy right here, um, he's the same individual who we saw looking at the destruction. Watching as the meteors or whatever they were struck the pyramid. Yeah. So we'll see, go we'll back up to kind of see if we get an idea of who he is. But right now we're looking at him in connection to this temple, or right. what we would consider the church. Okay, we're not. We doesn't really show us exactly what kind of church building this is. So let's back up. Okay, now notice here. That on this church, you can start to see the cross at the top. Right. So it's a Catholic church. Go ahead backwards. And you see how it's put together. It's kind of like this the cathedral thing. Right. And so it's kind of pointing to the Catholic church. Right? Right. Then keep going backwards. Now, notice on his head how his head has changed. Go forward a little bit. Now look at his head and how... That thing disappears when you go right. forward. When you go backward, it appears. Right. So that's showing us who this guy is supposed to be. He's supposed to be some kind of uh, uh, Messiah kind of figure. Right. But the thing is, as we're looking backwards, we see that the reef appears. But when you're going forward, you see that the reef is actually going away and it's resembling the Egyptian symbols. Right. Right. So that... It, that Egyptian uh, culture that we saw destroyed later on, we see that this guy is actually connected to it. Yeah. He even had a Christian facade or a Christian thing or a um, representation of the Messiah over top of it. To hide. To hide. So all of this is being connected. Now, when we now keep going backwards, okay, once it appears. And we also see that his crown is made of barbed wire. Oh, really? Okay, that's a good point. It's not really thorns. It's made of barbed wire, so that's another imitation. I, I had yeah. missed that point. But now, okay, now we're backing up. Now, notice right here where it appears as though he comes awake. See, he sleep right here, and then he kind of comes awake, and he's, like, shocked. Yeah. All right? So let's back up, and let's play this scene right here. And what I want, and what I want you to notice really closely, we have to look really closely, is how he... Gives a nod to three different things. He gives a nod to the fact that he has awoken. Yeah. He gives a nod to the destruction of the first part of this church. And he gives a nod to the second part of the church. I'll point out the three nods. Are you ready? Okay. So there's when he's awoken. There's the acknowledgement. Now look at the temple behind it. 
right? There. See that little nod? See it starts to fall. See, him, see the little nod? See the other one start to fall. Three yeah. nods. So this guy here is responsible for the destruction of the church. Right. And so now we're getting into Revelation chapter 18 when it starts talking about the fall of Babylon. Right. So this comes first. Anybody who knows their eschatology knows that Babylon falls first. Right. Right. Okay. So as we continue back through here, we can get some other points. Um, the only really thing we really needed to go out of that is um, how you have this um, worldly f leader here. Right. He's a worldly leader because he has this uh, Egyptian thing on his stamp to his forehead. Um, having or partaking in the uh, destruction of the Catholic Church is kind of like he gives credit. Right. And then, of course, after this scene, he goes on into watch the sunset where he watches um, the Egyptian system crumble. Well, he watches that six seal event. He watches the six seal. Right. Now, notice as we go backwards, you have these lotus flowers in the water. You can look up what the lotus flowers mean and all that kind of symbology here. Notice this boat that he's in. Hold up right there. Notice that he's in an Egyptian boat. But you stopped at a perfect time right here because this figure... Who somebody he's going to describe as the Antichrist. I kind of give him the name as the lawless one. Right. But for, you know, us all being on the same page, it's basically playing along with the same figure. This end times leader. Right. Is supposed to be responsible for all these bad things. Mm -hmm. We see him now being born. You are now looking at the birth canal here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we saw a few minutes ago where he came to where he was awakened. Right. So let's back up because I'm going to show you all of this birth canal and then we'll run through it. This figure here, of course, it has something to do with it and shows you that it's probably not the best of those things. Okay. Um, well, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's just show that part right there where he, where this figure is birthed. So you have that other figure that just came there. This one comes through the birth canal, right? Right. And then he goes in here and now he's awake. So this is the birth of the Antichrist, and he's nodding to and acknowledging his birth, and then he's nodding for the destruction of the church. And then, of course, he floats off into the sunset where he watched the, the destruction of pretty much everything else in the world. Right. Yeah. And I see that that, I guess, the head that is on the top of the birth canal, it has devil horns on it. I'm talking about this one right here? Yeah. It's hard to get a good picture of it right there. Yeah. So it's definitely not a good figure. This right here is actually showing that it has something to do with it, I guess. Yeah. All right. So let's scroll on back. As he goes back. So before he is born, there's this figure here. Now, this right here is the destroyer. The destroyer. Yeah, this is a um, demonic figure. It's supposed to be in the end times. They're supposed to be the destroyer of worlds. This is actually what's supposed to come back to destroy the entire planet Earth. Like we were talking about. Is lit on fire. Yeah, when the whole thing goes up. Um, so even he has some type of role in it. But what you see in here is how he's actually awakening at this point. See this light thing in his chest? Yeah. As we step back, we'll see that this light thing wasn't really there the whole time. Is at this moment that he's actually um, uh, awakened. Now, before here, you see him doing this dance. This is a um, what the destroyer does. Right. That's how he um, basically destroys the world is through this dance. Now, you know him changing here. Yeah. He's changing costumes. Yeah. Lion, leopard, Bird, man, something like that. It's, 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 you see him going through this. This is a representation of these 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 uh, destroyer, the, and he's wearing the mask of these beast system. Right. That's what should be and noted here is that you, even though he has the mask of these beasts, he it's, has the mask of the beasts. I forgot. I forgot what it said. Lion, leopard, man, bird, land, eagle, or something like yeah. that. He goes through all it. But, it's, but what should be noted here is how the destroyer has the mask of this. He's not the beast. He just has their mask on. Right. Okay, so let's go back. His thing is still lit here. Um, notice this fire that he's dancing around here. A lot of people make the connection with this with CERN. And somehow um, how he's doing this dance that um, 
this what CERN is doing over there as right. they take these uh, particles. Okay, now right in here. Now remember, we're going backwards. Right. Okay. So now before this figure is awakened. The CERN figure, I'm just going to say CERN, I don't know if it's really connected like that, but for the sake of, you know, getting through this, we'll say this figure, who's this destroyer, right. whatever CERN is doing down there, brings this destroyer into our reality. They have a statue of this figure in front of their building. That's another reason why we make yeah. the connection yet. So, whatever they're doing brings this, this destroyer. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and run through it so we can see how they destroy it, this dance that he's doing. We'll see him earlier. But we're going forward now and we see this dance that he's doing. This is what they're doing down at CERN. Right. And you see how he's changing into these different figures. He has the mask on like he's going through these different governments. Right. And then all of a sudden he goes through these and now he's turned into a man. And now as he turns into a man, as he goes through this kind of enlightened thing, now you have the birth of this Antichrist figure that's going to go on. To destroy. Well, he doesn't destroy. He just allows the church to be destroyed and then he watches the governments be destroyed he basically just you know watches but it's at this moment right here is where the big thing happens right so this is what some would refer to as the great awakening now i want to do a class because as i was studying all of this it really points to what they call the shekinah glory oh you ever heard of that i've heard of it what do you know about it not no. Not enough to talk about? Not enough. Me neither, but I'll talk anyway. The Shekinah glory was our father's presence on earth at certain periods during the time. Like for instance, when Adam was created in the Garden of Eden, that's how he was able to talk directly with the Father, is because of this Shekinah glory. Right. And then it was removed as a certain point, but then we know it came back in during the time of Moses. Right. And then it was gone away and it came back during different times where this Shekinah glory, this, this, this Shekinah glory, this presence of our father comes and goes. Right. Well, this is actually what we're expecting now. That's what people call the great awakening is the Shekinah glory. And I believe that's what this guy is going through right here. Okay. Where he is actually woken up. This is the awakening. That's why he's woken up. And that's why the uh, figure, um, that lawless one figure, that's why they both uh, wake up at the same wake time. up at the same time. See how he's doing a dance. So it makes you think the CERN has something to do with this great awakening. Maybe they unlock this, but he awakens. This beast thing lightens up. You have the birth of the Antichrist. Um, he goes for this showing some time before he actually wakes up, realizes who he is, takes his rightful position. Um, like the uh, Bible said in Revelation that he, um, our father would actually cause the governments to turn on the church system. Right. So that's why you have this government figure, um, destroying the church or giving the okay for the destruction of the church. Yeah. All right, so we're stepping back in time here. So the next thing we see that happens before is this figure here. Right. Now, you notice in this figure here that you have this dancing man above what we're going to find out later on is the Temple Mount. Right. Now, who this figure is, I don't know. You guys can help me in the comment section um, if you know who this figure is supposed to be. But whatever it is, we do know that it comes before the, the so-called awakening. Right. All right. He actually comes out of the Temple Mount. That's important to note there is that he comes out of the Temple Mount. So you have him rising up as some type of, uh, I want to say, divine figure there over the Temple Mount that we're going to find out, like you said. it. Right. When you look at this figure, maybe this will help you guys understand who he is, but notice this thing over his eye here. Yeah. We're going to see this boy with this thing over his eye here in a minute. All right, let's go backwards. All right, so now we see who's actually orchestrating this all. Right. We got this uh, uh, devil figure. He's been the orchestrator the whole time. Even in the part where the end of where, where the rocks come out of the uh, out of the uh, sky to destroy the economy, according to the Third Testament, that's a man-made act. Whatever it is that causes that, man does it. Like he um, creates a nuclear, I'm not making up stuff now, but as if he like m created a nuclear explosion on the earth that changed the orbit a little bit and put us right. in direct path 
I sum it as, yeah, according to the Third Testament, we put ourselves in the path of that destruction that destroys our economy. Right. Or they send a nuke and out into space and hit something and then the debris comes back down to us. Yeah. Yeah. Or something like that, but we cause it. Yeah. So, again, it's Satan. He's orchestrating this. Right. Okay. So, now, going back in time, we see this figure here. Now, this figure here, like I said, I'm using this for a visual aid. But for the sake of this conversation, I believe this is us. That I believe this is us here. Humanity right. represented as this egghead person here. Right. Notice his, his head is, is, there's the other end of the eggshell. It looks like his yoke is on his shoulders. And what we're seeing in this particular scene is how this figure is scaring it off. Right. Now, we'll find out that this figure has actually been tormenting this man. This this figure for a long time is actually now scaring it off. Right. So if we're doing our chronology in verse, reverse order, we see this figure, and we're going to find out who he is later, but we see how... He scurries away, and then... After he scurries away, down this figure gets on his feet. And notice he nods too. See that nod? Right. Acknowledging that he is now... Awake. Awake and, you know, in the fight, so to speak. Yeah. All right. So let's back up to where this guy, this little snake thing is scaring off. And now you have this figure here who we saw a few minutes ago was waking up. Right. Now watch what he's doing in this particular scene here. See, he's kind of yawning and stretching like he's all like he's almost trying to wake up. Right. Right. See, kind of stretchy thing going on there. But notice now go forward. Notice how when he shoots up in the air and he does this yarn thing, how all of these figures down here are destroyed. Right. So his yawning or his waking up process has something to do with the destruction of all of these figures down here. Right. Like and see how orderly they are, like almost militarized. Mm hmm. And see how it looks like it's coming out of the midst of those guys right there. Yeah. But then when you see here, you see who these guys are. They got business attire, all suits got and suits. Ties. Some of their faces are distorted. So I'm not really sure who they are. This one's eyes are light while this one's eyes are dark. You know, so there's not really sure who they are, but they all have on ties. And they all have on that until you get back to this figure, which was the same as we saw earlier, this destroyer. Right. Now it has on the costume of the destroyer. We'll get back to that. But let's run through right here as we see these businessmen being destroyed here. So you have this Antichrist figure that shoots up. He's yawning and is awake and destroys what seems to be... Corporate America? Corporate America or something like that. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's a good one. All right. So let's go backwards. Understanding that this corporate America comes, the destruction of this corporate America comes before and how this Antichrist figure has something to do with it. Right. If you read uh, the Apocalypse of Elijah, you see that this Antichrist figure's job is to destroy. That's probably why you see so much of this destroyer here. In this video right okay now like I said that's the costume of the destroyer the only way you know it's the same person is cause of that light on in his chest you see how he's still doing that dance right so the whole time this is all going on now notice here you have this water this is the represents the water breaking for the uh, anti-christ figure that's going to be born see the uh, birth canal that he came out of back there in the back right okay so He's basically getting ready to be born as you see this water. You can actually almost see him there. And then you have, if continuing back in time, um, you have this this lady here who is all of a sudden um, um, overwhelmed by the light. Right. Right. So we'll run through here. You're going to have this lady. We'll touch on her in a second. But she's she is actually going to experience this light. Right. That's coming from somewhere, and she, and when she does, it's going to send her in a state of shock, like she's going to be starting to panic. Panic. She's going to panic, and when she panics, she 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 tries to continue to uh, carry on as if she's trying to still orchestrate this thing. Right. Right. And or at least give the idea that she's orchestrating it. 
you know, who's really orchestrating it. But, and as she does, um, she kind of gets pinned up against the wall. Um, she exposes herself. And then we see this destroyer who's actually starting to get a little bit excited. Right. All right. So let's go through this and forward. There she's looking out the window. She's, she's seeing a light flash. Now she's, she's, she's uh, trying to hide. She's exposed to the light here. And then you see the birthing of this Antichrist here. Right. So to me, what that represents is how the church will first be exposed. Exactly. This would explain why the governments and the all these other people turn on them. Because now all the evil that they've been doing. Now you know what shown. you're dealing with. Yeah. And so this happens. We've got to back up here um, to see that this happens after this light shines on her. You know, after she sees this light uh, pretty much right there. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, right there is when she actually sees the light. Yeah. Okay. Almost looks like she's looking through the bars to find something. She's definitely looking through the bars to find it. Um, when we back up, we'll see what's going on here. We'll see which bar she's in. Now, notice here, back it up, we see her inside of this tower. Right. Well, we don't know that it's a tower, but we see that she's inside because she's closer to the bars than we are. Right. Now, notice that it has this heart thing that's flashing here. Same heart that was on... That guy's chest? Yeah, this is a religion that deals with this heart. It's all about love, this loving religion. Right. You know, this God loves everybody religion. No matter who you are, what you do, God loves you. Everything going to be all right religion. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why that's why you have this blinking heart sign as if it's, as you know, advertising that this is who we are. But then when you back up, first thing you may notice is that it has a cross on the top of this thing. Right. But then when you continue to back up, you notice that this is a phallus symbol. I don't think I said that right. Phallic symbol. This is the symbol of Satan's reproductive organ. It's clear here on the page. Yeah. The only difference is, is when you see it downtown in your um, street, you don't recognize it. When you see it in the middle of Washington, D.C. as the Washington Monument, you don't recognize, don't recognize that you're it. looking at the same thing because they don't put it in quite that shape. They don't give it as much detail. But you know that's what it is. Yeah. Well, the difference in this one is that it has this cross on the top of it. Right? And then we have this woman in the, in the, in the, in the midst. So let's back up a little bit more and then we'll play it. So what it, what you see is how this light is coming from somewhere else. Right. But then notice here how where the light source is coming from. Now, actually, I should point out that the light is there first. Yeah. So you have this church building giving off a kind of a light. Yeah. Kind like of a, a lighthouse. Yeah. Right. A lighthouse or signal away guy. Yeah. And then... As we're going forward now, you see this light is actually coming from the heavens. Right. And so you have this artificial light now being replaced by this uh, divine light. And you see as it goes in this building, it causes this disturbance in the church. So let's go ahead and play that right quick. You have the divine, the divine light coming in to the church. Uh, and it's kind of overwhelming this light. Some of the light actually gets in to where these church leaders are or the heart it is. Shines on her. She panics trying to keep going what she has going. Of course, and exposed by the light. Yeah. Um, the truth is kind of exposed. Then you have the birth of this Antichrist. Right. Now, you remember that this Antichrist figure, his purpose is to um, help humanity. Yeah. Not... The divine purpose, but his purpose, the reason why humanity comes in support of him is because the world is in such turmoil that they need him. Yeah. And there he is right there. You see his crown of uh, barbed wire. You see his heart on his chest. He got his other symbols going on on his forehead and all of that. Yeah. But then notice this part right here where these fish are jumping in his boat. Right. So, like I know this is a little bit confusing. So, you have the fish who are jumping in the boat of this figure first. Yeah. Even before he's awakened, they're already they were already jumping in his boat. So he remember when he when he woke up, he acknowledged who he was. Right. So he doesn't even know who he is. Yet all of these fish are jumping in his boat. See that? Yeah. Matter of fact, let's go back to the beginning of the fish scene. Not that this always comes back to the des des destroyer figure here, but we'll start with the destroyer figure and we'll play it forward. 
So there's him on the boat, the fish, water, um, and the fish are coming from the deep. They're all jumping in the boat at the bottom of his feet. Notice here, but this light is starting to shine. Yeah. So things are starting to happen. But even before it's done, so you have the people who are jumping into the boat of this Antichrist lawless one figure. All of these things have to happen before the so-called uh, day of the Lord. All right, so we're here. And you see them going in reverse order again. And you see it goes back to the destroyer is doing his dance. Right. You have to do some research on his destroyer figure because, like I said, you know, this is what's um, they're supposed to destroy the whole planet. Well, right here, you see these rocks coming out of the sky. They're actually, you know, starting this this water to be disrupted. This is the beginning of the so-called birthing pains, I guess. Yeah. Is what you see in here. Now, look right here where you're going back and you have this figure in this boat. Yeah. Right? So, he he's in the Egyptian boat. Yeah. And notice this lightning and stuff that's coming about him seems as if it's aiding in him coming to life. Now, right here, you notice where he's at? He's in the birthing chamber. Right. Right? So, he's about to be born here, going backwards. He's going back into the, the um, birthing chamber there. You notice here that some fire is coming out. Turns out this fire is actually coming out of his mouth here. And we're going to yeah. play it forward. We're going back in time. But notice before this fire that he goes through these window panes. Yeah. This is a representation. These window panes, this is a representation of dimensions. He's traveling through dimensions. Right. Right. This figure that's going to indwell this Antichrist figure is actually traveling through these dimensions before it starts this whole birthing process. Right. And then so let's start it right here at this egghead guy um, who's being tormented by this other snake figure up here. We'll get back to that. So let's start. Let's just roll it forward. You have this Antichrist figure coming through the dimensions, blowing this fire as he comes on the scene. You know, maybe that's to get everybody's attention. Yeah. Then he's kind of, you know, getting this lightning and stuff like that. Then here you start to see the beginning of the uh, water breaking or the birthing pains. Uh, the destroyers behind us got to keep doing a dance all while the people start to flock into this boat of this Antichrist figure. Right. Right. And then, of course, he's going to go on to... Um, it's like the rocks disturb the water and all the fish flock into the boat to try and get safe. Yeah. Like I said, he, this Antichrist figure, this lawless one, is providing hope for people in this time of, tr in this time of trouble. Right. So we'll start right here and we'll go backwards. We have him going. And, and before that, we have this figure here going on. Right. Where you have us, this egghead figure that's being tormented by this um, money man figure here, I'm going to call him. Right. Right. See how, it, see how he has a snake inside of his head? Mm -hmm. So whoever this is, is in his head. It's, it's in a television, like it's coming through the television. Right. And the cord from the television is in the guy's head as if this money man is torturing him through his television. You see that? Yeah. The guy's trying to wake up. He's in anguish because he can't deal with all of it. You know, this this guy, the Antichrist figure, you see him still awake there, just floating around on this water as if, you know, he don't know what's going. He's out of it. He doesn't know who he is. He's just kind of just going along. Right. Um, and before that, you see here war with China. Right. So speaking of the chronology, we're going backwards. So you have this China part of this war. and We'll get back to it. Let's go ahead and play it forward. You have the China part of this war. It's being orchestrated by the, by the devil. Right. Then you have this Antichrist figure who's floating along. He's not awake yet. Right. He doesn't know who he is yet. Just dancing along. He has the symbol of the Christ. And he also has the symbols of the Egyptian culture along with him. All while us, humanity, is being tormented by the economic systems of the world. Right. And, all, and then this guy is ready to break through coming from other dimensions ready to possess whoever this figure is that's why he right. doesn't know who he is is because he doesn't become the antichrist figure until this demonic figure who came through these other dimensions takes possession of his body right and then causes him to does us he may be a good guy now you may see him as a good guy now but when that demonic thing takes over him and it, and it kind of goes through this waking up process here see he may be good now you may think he's good he just works. He's just an agent of the of the state or the agent of the government or whoever. Right. But then when he wakes up is when you see the first thing he does is you know destroys the church. Right. But 
he does he's asleep because he doesn't know who he is all right so let's keep going backwards now what we see previous happens to that is this war with china right this is represented by china here you can see by the tigers and stuff on her clothes and stuff like that some of the other symbols she has notice she does have the heart on her on her uh cheek she there but you see you, you, you see she's being attacked. But you see here the other Chinese symbols here. Right. Right. And then what you notice is that this war is being orchestrated by this devilish figure here. Right. And you see the thing about it, she's actually waving a white flag. Surrendering. There's who I believe represents America. Right. Right. Who in my imagination a the only country a Chinese country would imagine waving a white flag in front of. Right. So it's waving this white flag, but it doesn't come to any good thing because look at it appears as though the satanic figure says to this figure, um hmm? Keep going, stop don't stop fighting. Yeah, and this is your fate is sealed. You know, right. give up if you want. You really don't have a choice. So there you have her waving. And then this other figure comes behind and says, No, I'm running this show. You know, you go and she she's like, Okay, settles into her fate. And then, you know, we go on to see um, these systems of the world um, kind of tormented uh, by this, this guy right here. Right. And he kind of showed us with the other man riding on a boat. He's still asleep. But, you know, this guy, he's been yakking for a long time. Right. All right, we're going to see that. So let's back travel back in time, talk more about this so-called war. Because you see right there is Russia. Yep, with the hammer and the sickle. Yeah, and it appears as though they are going under some type of chemical right. thing, right? So here you have the 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 uh, Chinese army or the Chinese government um, facing right here, and then when we back up in time, you see this figure here who kind of looks like a robot. Mm -hmm. So this kind of points to some type of drone type war or something like right. like maybe the gift was the drones. Maybe, and, 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 and give father credit for, you know, this, this idea if there's any truth in it. But how about Africa, who is right here, just received the early generations, that's why it's young, right. drones as a gift. Mm -hmm. Somebody just gave him the early gifts of these drones. And that's why the weapon that the drone is carrying looks old. And yeah, it's an it's a AK-47. AK right. World War II or World War One weapon. But it's definitely a drone. You see the lights there in his eyes. So I believe that's what that is. And the thing about it, we're talking about the chronology. So you have the wars that go on first. Right. You know, people, they often want to, you know, think about the end times. They want to skip over all of this other stuff that has to happen first. Right. Right. Okay. So here you have this other figure. So we're going to start here. There's that eyeball thing we were talking about earlier. And that's the one that rose out of the temple. That's the, yeah, that's the one that came out of the temple later on. Let's, let's, let's go forward right here. So after we see him, then we see this drone being given as a gift. Right. Right. And then we see Russia. Going under this green gook stuff. Right. Right. Then we see China trying to surrender before this huge army. And, you know, they're to basically see, find out that, you know, this figure here has other plans. They don't right. particularly like those plans. And then you get all, all this is going on while you have this Antichrist figure still sleep here. Right. Right. And then it continues on. Right. So let's back up. All of this stuff has to happen first. Now we're getting into the good part because now we're getting back to where we are today. We have to get past this guy. Right. Notice here how he has this eye like he got a really severe black eye. Yeah. But then notice his clothes. He's been bandaged up. Been bandaged up like he's been in some type of war. And then as we back up, we see that he's dead. Yeah. Because that bug on his face. That's a, a flesh. That's a beetle. You know they eat they eat dead carcasses and stuff. Right. And the fact that he's not moving, could you imagine that thing walk across your face? So I think that's just to show you that he's dead. Yeah. And this had, that figure could be you know have something to do with the Muslim belief in this resurrection of some god. I don't know. But anyway, before we see him, we see this part here. Yeah. Yeah. What do you see there? I see a lady with a halo. 
That's would Crying. be an angel. An angel. That's a representation of an angel. She's yeah. some dark though. She's a dark angel. Right. And crying over the boy that we had just seen. Right over this ward is just seen. Okay. What else? And has that vial in her hand. She has a vial in her hand. Yeah. But when you back up, look at what happens. When you when you take a few steps closer, when you get to about right there. Now what do you see? I see a mushroom cloud coming out of the vial. Coming out of the vial, having destroyed this child. Right. This is the this is the what I believe I pet goat is trying to tell us here is that you have this nuclear bomb going thing off. going off, destroying Love this child. And, what, and that's probably representing multiple people being destroyed by this blast. Right. All right. So let's play it from here. You have this figure here. You have this lady here or this angelic figure here. And then there's the guy that's dead right there. So he's dead in her arms. The beetle is walking across him. And now, so that starts the war. Right. This war, according to what we're reading here, and according to what I'm, I read in the scripture, that's the big thing here, is that. I'm not saying I pet goat is telling the story. I'm saying the scripture is telling the story, but I'm saying somehow I pet goat can be used as an illustration of what the scripture is saying. Right. The nuclear blast, we can we just get a little more detail here, understanding that this the blast comes first, at least that's the man's plan. And that's how we can know that this is true. Because Man is orchestrating this. Not our father created. Can nobody cry and say, you know, nobody knows the day or the hour. Nobody knows what God planned. This ain't God's plan. Right. This is man's plan. He has had this plan. We're going to see here if we get back to George Bush. This has been the plan the whole time. Right. right. You know, so all of that, you know, nobody could figure out scripture stuff. That don't apply here. All you really need to do is study the new world order. Right. And you and you and you there. But anyway, let's step back through. We got this war. There's some loaded locust, lotus flowers, or some kind of flower there. And you, you could see if you go back to that robot, you could see that it actually has the heart on its forehead. So it's a, it's a show that it's Jay Z with this heart too. Yeah. That's the thing. That's when the scripture says that this um this harlot that rides this this seven headed beast, right. she's throughout all of the government systems. Yeah. This they're this, all interconnected. They're all answers connected. They're all riding this beast. That's how they've actually become successful. Right. And civilized. All right. So we going back in time. Before that, you have this destroyer figure up here. You see that thing on his chest? He doesn't right. look happy for some reason. He looks a few minutes from now. He's going to be excited and, and glad, but now he's sad. Right. I don't know what it is, but something's going on with him here in the early stages. It should be noted that he didn't start off too happy. Then you have this little part of the video where you have this white butterfly looking thing. Right. That's being killed by this Antichrist figure. Right. Right. You see the heart on his chest is kind of flaming there for some reason. Yeah. And you got the flame over here, and then this thing right here is being burnt up. He grabs the butterfly and he grabs burns the butterfly. It. Or the butterfly flies to him for some reason. The butterfly is attracted to him, and then he kills him. That could represent all of those people who may be pure and holy who goes over to this antichrist figure, right. and he basically burns them up. Right. right. And then when we go back in time, we notice these birds here coming out of this temple here. Right. Yeah. So whereas the little white thing would have been representing purity or good, these black birds are representing evil. Right. And what you notice is how these evil birds, which would be demons, are coming out of this temple, out of this hole here. Right. You see the uh, figure of Islam right here, right there. Figure of Islam right there. And when we back up, we see that this building has recently been destroyed. Right. Right. So this this is the dome of the rock. This is the temple. You see the Muslim thing right there. Right. You can see some other thing symbols here that represents the city. But you see right here how it's exploding. Right. And then when you step back in time, you see the cause of this destruction are these bombers here. Right. Notice how they look like American bombers. Yeah. There are three American bombers there. And it appears these American bombers are destroying this building. Let's go ahead and play it from right here. So you have the bombers that go through, destroy the Dome of the Rock. Right. These demons come out of the Dome of the Rock. Like I said, all of this fits scripture. Then you have this figure destroying the white ones. Then you have the nuclear bomb. Right. So the chronology of this thing then is you have the Dome of the Rock being destroyed first. Right. And then 
um, the, the unleashing of the demons that we've heard about, those demons that's been saved up for the for this time. Right. The ones that we know Solomon, you know, he he put them under his temple. Got the book right here. He put them under the temple. Yeah. Well, nuclear bomb may destroy some of that what he put under that temple. Well, or or those bombers dropping bombs on a building may hurt, may disturb a few things down there. Right. A few demons in the closet. And, you know, break the seals. Breaks the seals, and so you have these demons that come up out of here, and of course they go throughout the world. Right. Those of us who, who otherwise want to uh, follow, do what the Lord say, the good guys, when right. they go to the Antichrist, are burned up, destroyed, right. leaving maybe only those on the fence and halfway, which are according to the scripture, are those who will follow the Antichrist. Yeah. To the day they find out he is the Antichrist. Then it'd be a little bit too late. Yeah, it's a little too late then. So, did we run through it already? Uh, yeah. We did? All right, so let's continue backwards then. Because now we are getting right here what where I think we are. Um, Well, let's go through back. Let's go backwards. We have the destruction of the temple coming after these bombers put a bomb in the middle of the building. Right. It's amazing how that all happens. Then we get here to this figure here, which I say represents us. Yeah. And we see him in his, in his eyes, war coverage. You see right there? Yeah. War coverage. And then as we back up, um, you see he says war coverage. It says markets plunge. Yeah. So the chronology of the thing, the markets plunge. Then there's a war. Then there's the destruction of the Dome of the Rock. Right. Then there's the unleashing of the demons. Right. And on and on and on. on, and on. This is where I believe we are right now, though. I believe this is what's next. Is this right here? Let's let's back up a little bit more, and I'll show you why. You have this part here. You have this money man figure over him. Yeah. Notice that he has one eye. Mm -hmm. You know who that who that points to. The Jewish, Jewish uh, kind of uh, Kabbalah kind of thing, and it's you yeah. know, and so you have him in the figure has the pyramid on his chin, pyramid on his chin, upside down. His his uh, his hair is all silver. His teeth is all gold. His earrings are gold. So you know he's representing the economy, who is now messing with these people here. Like you say, he's been going on for a long time. There he is there. That's us there. You have the in our heads by yeah. way of this tube. But notice all of this stuff on the ground. Yeah. Looks like needles and pills. Yeah. I'm wondering here if these aren't the vaccine. Could be. You have America who's sick. Look how sickly he's looking. Humanity yeah. who's sickly looking or on these drugs. It could be drugs or anything. It could yeah. be heroin or anything. Right. But America strung out on heroin or, or got us inundated by the vaccine or something something to do with pharmacia right here. Yeah. And all of this is going on while this uh, other figure is dancing. Like it says, this other figure is dancing above his head. Yeah, taunting it. Yeah, basically saying, give me my money. I don't care about your uh, um, Ailment. ailments and this, that, and the other. Give me my money. Where is my money? Right. So let's go ahead. Now, backing up to right here, notice how it comes out of this guy's head. Right. There's the Antichrist figure. Mm. But notice when I go forward, it appears to come out of his head. See that? Mm-hmm. See that? Come that's forward. Right. Go backwards. So let's back up. Let's back up to where he's actually seen. And then we'll go forward. I'm going backwards right now, so it goes in the heart. So it's showing you the symbology here. And so there he is. When we go forward, let's play it forward. You got the heart symbol showing you the religion. Then you got him right here. And then it's showing you that this figure is actually coming out of his head. And this figure that's coming out of his head is in some type of television where he's actually in our heads. And he's tormented us all while we're sick. And this goes on for a while until he sees war coverage and war he sees the dome of this and the stock market's class. Then he sees this uh, dome of the rock goes down. Yeah. Then he sees this demons unleashed. Right. Right. So what could I? What do I believe is going to happen? January the thirteenth. I, I believe is actually this part right here. This is where I believe we are. 
We laid out here. This is humanity laid it out out here. Sick. Sick. The 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 B system is in our head on the television. We can't answer the phone. We can't do this. Can't do that because we're afraid of this, that, and the other. Yeah. And all while this thing is getting ready to jump off. This is where I believe we are. But before I would go forward, let's go backwards. So why I believe we're we're at this point. Now notice this snow coming down like it's winter time here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is that January 13, 2022? Is that January 3rd day? Is that winter time of next year? Right? We know we we know it's not in the past because we haven't seen the destruction of the Dome of the Rock yet. Right. So we continue going in the past. You got that figure up there that's doing his little thing, you know, all over the TV is showing that it ain't just the one guy, it's everybody. Um, he goes back into the guy's head. You see that there's only a little bit of fire on the heart. Oh, so it's just now igniting. That's a good one. Reminding us this, uh, uh, the, the significance of this boat right here, this is a death boat. It's supposed to be the boat from the spirit world. Right. Yeah, that's the part of that Egyptian thing is they're supposed to ride this boat from the spirit or into the spirit world or back from the spirit world. Anyway, it's, it's supposed to travel. It's like a death boat. Right. That's the boat you ride on when you die. All right, so we're backing up. Now notice that you have this figure here, but it's not grown. It's it's like a primitive figure. Right. It's an older TV. It has an older picture on it. But notice this egghead baby now is just an egg. Right. So this is coming back in time, showing us how this is, you know, this. Um, we were brought up into this economic system. Right. Where you see right here is kind of nurturing us and taking care of us. Right. Where later on, like now, it's, it's going to be tormenting us and, and it. Right. So you raise us to be the way you want us and only knowing that, you know, you're going to do this later. on us later. You're going to do this later. So that's taking us back in time. Again, notice how the picture looks like an older version, older television. There's us inside of this thing. It's funny how it seemed to have us praying in there. But there you see, right here, you see the fall of the freedoms of America. What is that torch supposed to mean? Freedom? That's a, yeah, freedom. So you're going to have this this... This freedom that falls. Right. This is actually what's going on now. Yeah. This is, you know, why there's so much gun violence and different stuff going on. Um, a lot of that is to give us the impression that we want to do away with the guns. Right. Right. A lot of this other stuff, you know, what they call false flag attacks. Yeah. Are taking our freedoms away. So this we can actually point to as being in the past. This right. is past tense stuff is actually already... Uh, going on, same with the baby and the egg. This yeah. economy has already been going on. We're just now getting to the point where we're starting to be tortured by this thing. Now, notice this symbol down here in the water, this six-sided thing. Yeah. That very well could be pointing to the Jewish community. Turns out the Jewish community, you know, has something to do with it. All right. But we're traveling back in time. Now you see the oil in the in the in the river here, uh, you know, dripping in the river there in the background. It's got all there's an oil rig back there that's pumping. Yeah, you see it back there. You have this Osama bin Laden figure who, at the time of this video, was actually still alive. Yeah, and he has the symbol of the CIA showing that he's working from the government. Mm -hmm. But notice that even though he was at the alive at the time of this video, notice he has angel wings on. Right. He was alive when he made this video, but he has angel wings on. And he has um, these other demon-looking figures behind him. Yeah. And then they're showing you some of the timing here with this moon. You just got to know how to read it. But you have him who is somehow summoning all of this stuff as far as this oil is concerned. Yeah, and it looks like those people that were behind him were, I guess, pushing him to the edge. Or, or behind them. Maybe they was just his supporting army. Right. But notice here how the Antichrist figure is already on the scene. This, I think, goes back to the Obama days, what we're seeing here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Let me, let, me, let me slow up and get a little bit ahead of myself. But the Antichrist figure is already on the scene. He's already coming in to um, um, his rightful position, riding on his death boat. Right. So that would mean he's already a part of who we are now. Now, you have this guy here who's mm -hmm. the destroyer. Right. He's looking like he's uh, sad for some reason. Still sad. Still sad for some reason. Um, this, I believe, is sometime during the Trump era. Um, but we'll come back to that. Because I believe this right here is the end of the Obama era. See that? Right. This right here is the destruction of the family. 
which I believe President Obama had a large role or plot part in. Yeah. See how you have the man figure there and the woman figure? This is the woman. This is the man here. Right. This is the destruction of the family. I'm going to back up just a little bit more. I'm going to go forward. I know it's a lot going on here, but this is some of the past tense stuff. You know, that they, they've already started the destruction of the family. Here you have the American flag that's split. Right. This right here, you have 49 stars on this part of the flag, and then the part of the flag that flies away has one star on it. Yeah. So that right there um, could actually represent Texas, but it could actually represent the split that was caused by Donald Trump. Right. So you have this split by Donald Trump. There's the one star on it. You have this split by Donald, this split uh, uh, started by Obama. We get back in here and we'll see Obama. There's the uh, uh, Psalms 23 on the, on the wall. Mm -hmm. The wall walked through the valley, shadow of death. And there you have uh, Obama here, which seems to be at the end of his presidency. You know, after you know all of this stuff is going on, right. realizing all this going on. You know, at the end of his presidency. So let's watch Obama right here and we'll go through Donald Trump and we'll get to present day. So we're about to go through the valley of the shadow of death here. And then you see the clock on the wall. I missed that. The clock on the wall back there says um, two minutes to 12. That's the doomsday clock. Yeah. And if you go to the doomsdayclock.com, you see you're right there at that point. That's probably the best we get. See, it's right at 12 o'clock. Yeah. And so we've got the, the splitting of America, which I believe is Donald Trump era. And then, which was started by Obama, you have the uh, fall of the family here in the Trump era. That's why you see them falling like the Twin Towers. Yeah. And then as the family fall, then you see this destroyer who somehow, is he connected to the fall of the family? I'm not sure. And he and jumps into the water. Jumps into the water, which we learn is oil. And then you have this Antichrist figure and this Osama bin Laden figure that are going on here showing that it has something to do with this whole oil thing and we'll see George Bush here and then we start to see the liberties of America fall away which you said are going on now right. we see um, 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 this this economic thing with, uh, creating his plan with us here all while this antichrist figure rides in on this death boat still being asleep um, somehow behind this uh economic systems that are grown up now they're sophisticated now yeah and you know what i mean and it got us broken whereas before we were a child in an egg now we are a broken egg and it's all tormenting and torturing us until the day we see uh the dome of the rock so that's what i believe all of those people are going to wake up on january the 14th and they're going to say oh crap i'm still here but they're not going to bother to look at the news to see what actually happened over there. Right. You got to understand that the um, Daniel, when he was talking about the date, he was talking about the temple. They took the daily sacrifice away. That was yeah. a temple event. They built the Dome of the Rock on top of the temple. So this third thing could, I believe, is pointing to a temple thing. Right. I believe it very well could be talking about that building, the Dome of the Rock, being destroyed. So if I was to put money and say what's going to happen on January the 13th, something to do with the economy, that's going to quickly escalate to a war. A war. Yeah. And, and, and people are going to miss it. They're going to be thinking, hey, we still here. I bet it's going to be the prettiest, most shiny day ever. Beautiful day. January 13th is going to be beautiful. It's going to be 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be sunny. It's going to be uh, um, not much wind. You're going to right. want a barbecue on a thing and just be out there happy. At the same time, you know, where that guy at? Let me find him. Where that guy at? At the same time, this guy right here is manipulating his plan. Right. But let's let's finish. You know, let's finish. You haven't made it this far. All right. So we'll start here at the doomsday clock and go back in time. Looking how America comes back together. Um, maybe even, guess you got to go back to the Obama days for that. Or maybe before, depends on where you, how you look at it. You see him right there is where he's um, coming to the realization, I believe, that, you know, that is, uh, what they say, it was at that moment you knew you messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was at that moment. 
um, sweat coming from his head opposed to tears coming from his eyes. Yeah. This is Obama. He has on a scholar hat. He has a symbol of the laugh out loud. Yeah. Like he was supposed to come in and make a joke out of everything. Right. You know, um, notice all these, like this symbol here, um, splitting of the brain. That's yeah. part of the New World Order plan. Uh, evolution being right here. Yeah. Um, all Amen. of this. This house, the shark, Obama winking at us, all of these symbols letting us know that he was in on a plan. But what I want to bring you back is to George Bush, because this is what's going to make all of this make sense. There's a symbol again. He's pointing to the symbol. There's the F naught equals minus F naught, something like that. It's supposed to be. You see right here, 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then you have this enlightened figure right here. Right. Right. See, it's evolution into this enlightened figure. Point at 12 o'clock. George Bush is pointing to it. Yeah. yeah, he may have on a dunce hat, but he ain't dumb as he look. When you go back in time in the video, well, right here is what I want to show you, and that's that George Bush is the star of this show. So when you study the New World Order, this plan here yeah. start with George Bush. That's where this video started from. Right, it's George Bush. Because he is, in fact, the star of the show. You watch this video called Origins of the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'll give you guys a link to it. It's about two and a half hours long. And after you watch that, then come back and watch I Pet Goat video again. And see, ain't this plan laid out in there? Go read your Bible. Yeah. And and look at so you're looking at the history of the of our father's plan. You're looking at through the Bible. You're looking at uh, Satan's plan through a root through that movie called Origins of the Illuminati. Right. And then you come back to iPad Goat, and you're like, yeah, we in for a rough so. ride. And who's that woman in the background? Well, that was the teacher that was there when he when they knocked down the twin towers. He this represents the classroom. He was sitting oh. in a classroom reading a book to some children. When they came in the door and whispered in his ear. And that supposedly was the time that he found out that the Twin Towers had been knocked down. Yeah. Right. And you see right here that he was a puppet. When you study the origins of the, the, the Illuminati, you see that, yeah, he was more than a puppet. He was a willing puppet. Yeah. He didn't resist. You know. But he, he was, his, his, his presidency was not an accident. Right. Right. So that's the iPad Goat movie. Um, I wonder if it's showing us the end at the beginning, how we all end up in concentration camps. <laughs> yeah, that's that what happens after the, the that stuff comes and destroys the economy. Right. That's why FEMA is so geared up right now. Yeah. Body bags, ammunition, food, you know, uh, temporary shelters, all of this stuff is because they plan to house us. Concentration because camps. we have no no way. Well, it doesn't start off as a concentration camp. It starts mm -hmm. off as a, a beneficiary camp place where you just go get food and water. But then you one day you won't be able to leave. Yeah, one day they lock the gates, you know, and you don't you don't get to go out anymore. I believe that's where the market of beats comes from because now how are they gonna keep up with you? How did they know that you didn't get two boxes of MREs? Right. And so now you have this card or this chip or something that actually keeps track of you. Which, like I said, you study the, the Illuminati's plan, you see that they have already been doing this stuff for a long time. People down down there right now in Disneyland swapping their chips in their hands to get into Disneyland to go on a fun ride. Right. Well, we got just some Just practicing. Yeah, we're just practicing, yeah. They said, they said when it comes to the market of beats, people will not have to be forced. They will line up to get it. They, you ain't have to make them get it. They can get it on their own. Yeah. All right, so let's roll through this thing one more time. We're going to go through the bin again, and we're not going to stop until we get to the end, and that's going to be the end of this video. Ready? All right. All right, here we go. Coach of the fight, and what do you think is going to happen? All right, so I believe it's showing us the end at the beginning. This is where we're going to end up, concentration camp. You see that number six up there is the representative of man. It shows you the symbols down there, letting you know it is a concentration camp because it has the dog down there, you know, being, you know, pulling the man, the security officer. Right. So here's the ultimate thing. You're saying that this Satan figure with this money ring on is actually controlling things. And he's controlling George Bish because, like I said, he starts off with him being the leader of this show. This is his really 
started with his daddy or even his granddaddy, but George Bush was actually the star because this is when we knocked down the Twin Towers and we did all his other stuff that was all part of this whole sacrificial process. Right. You see, he's pointing to the Great Awakening, letting us know, and his other symbols on the wall can all be deciphered in order to understand what message where he's trying to send us here. Yeah. Okay. And got the hearts on the wall. Got that other heart down there. You see his devilish symbols there, letting us know that he's putting some type of witchcraft or voodoo on us or something like that. Then he transformed, letting us know that this is the same guy. He may look different, but Obama and Bush are actually there to do the same thing. Obama was there to be the smart guy, while Bush was there to be the dumb guy. But it's like bad cop, good cop, they're doing the same thing. Then it points over here to the CERN stuff and what all they got going on here. Now, why she has the apple and drops the apple right now, did they kind of lose something? Did something not go well for him? I don't know, but all of that means. This lotus flower, like I said, it has something to do with the supernatural, kind of a spiritual symbol here. If you look up the lotus flower, you'll see what message they're trying to tell us here and there's some other stuff on the floor. Here, Obama, like I said, gets the message of kind of what goes on. You can imagine, you know, at the end of your presidency, when it comes and tells you all the real stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then you have the split of America there with the flag right around the time when a doomsday clock says uh, uh, um, that we're at 12 o'clock, which is now. You have the fall of the America. All of this stuff has been taking place. I believe we're in the Trump era now. And then you start to see this uh, destroyer jump off into this river full of oil. And all of a sudden, we all of a sudden have the first appearance of this Antichrist lawless one figure. Right. So he's floating around, doesn't know who he is. In the meantime, you have Osama bin Laden, who is somehow an angel now. Somebody knew he was an angel. All about all of this oil. When you go back to George Bush, you'll see why it's all about this oil. Okay, so then you have the America and the liberties being taken away, all while the, the people of America are in this kind of this um, um, economic um, experiment here, I'm going to call it, all while this Antichrist lawless one figure is on this death boat coming in from the spiritual world. Now, he's related to this economic figure here that's putting torment on us. It's inside of our head, and this is what brings us to present day. This is where we are right now. We, they're getting us with the vaccines. They're getting us until we see here the, the economic collapse, war coverage, and then we have that. That's what's next. Those yeah. three events. Are they going to take a year to happen? Or are they going to take a day to happen? I don't know, but though, that's where we're at. Then we come into this nuclear blast, which actually starts this war and all of this stuff that's going on here. Um, uh, Africa's in this war, according to what we read here. Africa's in this war. We have Russia that's in this war. Don't look like they faring too well in the war. And then we also have China, who was in this war. Well, like I said, appears to be wanting to give up. You see some other Chinese symbols that appears yeah. to be wanting to be give up. But this other figure, this guy who's really controlling things, basically says, no, you, you, your, your fate is sealed. So, you know, again, this points to the scripture that talks about the destruction of that, that part of the world. You know? Right. Um, but then you have this Antichrist figure who's still asleep here, doesn't know who he is. You have the, um, the, 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 the monetary figure still on torn, but you see it's kind of waking up. Now you have the Antichrist antichrist figure coming through time zones coming through dimensions so to speak as he's in the birth canal getting ready to be born you see here the water is starting to break as he as he's getting ready to be born all of these events are down the road the destroyer is not sad anymore the destroyer is happy and after all of these events have taken place so far you have now people starting to flock into the antichrist they're seeing all of this war and destruction and all of this they flock in and then you have the great awakening the wild out moment is still yet away. You have the great awakening, which comes to shine light. It shines light on the church, apparently first. Maybe the church gets the light first. And maybe they're the first to recognize it. They try to 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 maintain all while this Antichrist figure is still uh, uh, coming along, being born. The destroyer is, is doing a break dance right now. Antichrist figure is involved in the governmental system somehow, and he has a negative effect on corporate America, like you says. There you go, the corporate America squirming off into the background. There's humanity who's now recovering, getting on their feet, realizing that you know we didn't necessarily need those um, civilizations. Uh, devil still um, um, orchestrating. You have this figure here who comes, who could be the you know the return of Christ. I don't know. 
You know, I don't know if that's what it's trying to say there or not. But then you have uh, this uh, destroyer who was put on a mask now. He's right. put the mask on, the mask of the governments now. He's got it on. He's still doing his little destroying dance, changing from, you know, all of these figures. His chest is lighting up and glowing strong. And then all of a sudden, he's awakened. And this thing is awakened. And the Antichrist is coming out, is, re is born amongst these lotus flowers, you know, and there he is awake. He acknowledges the fact that he is awake, and then he acknowledges the destruction. The head comes first, boom, there it is. Then comes the fall of the temple. Now here comes another one, boom, there it is. Here comes the other fall of the other half of the temple. Then he goes off, you know, as if to pay no attention to what he's done here. He goes off into the sunset. There's a lot of symbols and stuff that's going on in here. There's some timing of some stuff that's going on in here. I can't say I know what all of it is. But over here, you have him going off into the sun, watching this. Some call it Planet X. Some call it Nerubu. Coming from behind the sun. Destroyed the, uh, the, uh, the Egyptian economy there. The other one falls straight behind it. Those are the global economic systems of the world being completely annihilated. You know, yeah. They ain't never coming back now. This is gone. And so now you have the, the rest of this. Humanity goes into um, basically distinction level event. No food. No water. No shelter. No nothing. You know, all of we've put all of our faith into man to give us, you know, what we wanted, forgetting the uh, promises of Jacob. The promises right. of Jacob was food and, and clothing. We've allowed man to give us those stuff as if we didn't need a father to give them to us. Well, there's coming a rock from behind those clouds that's going to make us think otherwise. All right. See, that's a lot, of t lot to take in. Mm-hmm. At least you know what I think now. Yeah. You know, ain't no doubt on what I think. No doubt at all. We'll, we'll, we'll look at iPad Goat 3 and get the other half. Yeah. Did you know it was an iPad Goat 3? I just heard about it recently. I, wasn't there something like there wasn't actually an iPad Goat 1? Yeah, there wasn't an iPad Goat 1, but there's definitely an iPad Goat 3. And maybe we'll take a look at it in the next video. Yeah. Or, well, I'd have to do a little bit of studying, so it might not be the next one. But in the meantime, y'all go ahead and hit the subscription button. Leave us a comment. And with that, we'll say shalom. Shalom.